Welcome to Graduate School 101, presented by the University of Georgia Graduate School's Office of Recruitment and Diversity Initiatives. This video will help prospective students, parents and guardians understand this process, as well as faculty and staff members who would like to send this video to students who they think could be future Georgia Bulldogs. We would like to let you know that this presentation is shaped for first and second year students. Traditionally, the workshop lasts one hour. However, we wanna concisely share the key elements, the key information so that everyone has accessibility in learning about graduate school. So let's talk about why people choose to go to graduate school. They choose it because of the professional advancement. Typically there's a role, a position, a title that you might pursue and it will require a degree beyond your bachelor's. Do people think, hey, I don't know what I'm going to do for grad school, so I guess I'll just figure it out as I go. Or perhaps I'm not sure what I want my career to be, so I guess I'll go to grad school. I would recommend that you think twice about that. There is a lot of pressure in our society to figure out our career, our dream job, to determine what we want in life. But I recommend if you aren't sure, take your time. Don't succumb to that pressure. It's completely normal to not know everything at once. So please, I encourage you to figure out what interests you in classes. I encourage you to take internships, externships, shadow. Even if you have to do a gap year like I did, feel free to take your time and decide what research you wanna to contribute to. How do you want to change the world? What practice do you want to be a part of? And once you figure that out, then come to grad school. Intellectual stimulation. Sometimes the topic that we're so drawn into that we love talking about, reading about, YouTubing about, we get drawn in, we can't stop researching it, learning it, understanding it. This is a great reason to go to graduate school. In fact, the knowledge you will be exposed to will be far beyond your bachelor's education. Last but not least, prestige, or as I like to say, the reputation of a school. Several of us can name schools that everyone knows in our neighborhoods, in our schools right now, the places we walk and talk about and the, the news we read. However, do not solely look at the reputation of an institution because it might be top five, top 10 in the country, perhaps even the world, but does it have what you need to move you forward, to give you that intellectual stimulation? So while prestige is important, don't make it your number one goal for why you would go to grad school. So just process prestige, think about it, it might be a factor for you, it might not, but don't let it be the first factor. Some advantages to graduate education include being more marketable, increasing your earning potential, becoming an expert, achieving personal growth, and having job satisfaction, having the ability to change careers, demonstrating your ability to master complex topics, what is graduate education? So graduate education encompasses research, study, and teaching beyond the bachelor's degree. While undergraduate education leads to a bachelor's degree, meaning that's the highest degree you can receive, graduate education can lead to an array of degrees, including a master's, education specialist, doctorate, also known as a doctoral degree, and professional degrees as well. Graduate degrees can help people advance further in their careers and earn higher salaries over time. These are some of the aspects that evolve around being a student in graduate education and the differences that you might think about when you think of your undergraduate experience versus what your graduate education can be. So I highly recommend that you explore an academic program. So if you think about our grad school website, you could see up here, it's grad.uga.edu. And when you scroll down a bit on our homepage, you'll find these different filters to help you figure out 
what degree you're interested in. And then let's say you don't know these different pieces and parts. You can just search keywords and you can find different graduate degrees that might interest you. So we encourage you to go to our website. It's also at the bottom of the slide. So I want to talk about a master's degree and a doctoral degree, because these are the typical degree types you will hear about. So for a master's degree, you're going to acquire skills needed to practice in a particular profession. It may be one to three years of study. It might involve an internship, fieldwork, or final project. Sometimes certain programs may require you to take comprehensive exams or submit a thesis or some other research paper as a requirement for your master's degree. Certain master's degrees might be terminal, which means that's the highest degree that you can receive, or if they're not terminal, then there's a step and a pathway towards a doctoral program as well. At you, as you could see down here, these are different examples of master's degrees. Doctoral degree. You're treated as a scholar in your field, and you're trusted to design, implement, and assess research. This may take three to seven years of study, and most programs will require you to research, write, and submit a dissertation, which is a big word for an extensive research paper, to graduate. Typically, a doctoral degree is the highest degree you can attain in most fields. And here are some examples of different doctoral degrees. A doctor of philosophy you've heard of most often, but there are other doctorate degrees that you can receive as well. So here we have the matching game, the graduate school edition. As a first generation student, I really work hard to break down language barriers. Sometimes we say and use words that we're so used to in, in our institutions, we often forget how it feels to be new, to be exposed to a word you've never heard before and to feel a bit embarrassed that you don't know what these words mean. So I hope this exercise will help you. We have a list of graduate school vocabulary, as you can see, starting from GRE program, interdisciplinary terminal degree, thesis slash dissertation, comps, short for comprehensive exams, cohort, concentration, major professor, funding, and assistantship. So I'm going to show you some undergraduate vocabulary to help you connect the dots. Graduating class in undergrad, we think of the class of 2026. That's the class that predicts when a student might graduate. However, in grad school, we say cohort. And that cohort focuses on the year you start, not the year that's predicted for you to finish. Major. When you hear major in undergrad, think program in grad school. That's why I'll talk a lot about graduate programs. Minor, think concentration. Financial aid, think funding. I will say at UGA, if you use the word financial aid, sometimes people assume that you mean loans. So I highly recommend that when you talk to professors or graduate coordinators, make sure you say the word funding. Work study, assistantship. So in exchange for working a certain number of hours a week, you receive funding in graduate school and that funding will cover your graduate education for the most part. Final exam, comprehensive exam, academic advisor, major professor, bachelor's degree, terminal degree. Once again, terminal meaning the highest you can receive in undergraduate education, that is a bachelor's degree. And once again, in graduate education, for the most part, it's a doctoral degree. Final paper, a thesis, if you're doing a master's, or a dissertation, if you're doing a doctoral degree. Double major, interdisciplinary. Last but not least, SAT, think GRE. So here are some ways that you can hopefully break down language as you see it on websites, as you talk to individuals on the phone or as you write via email, make sure that you are able to understand the language and hopefully this will help you in your graduate education journey.
So expectations on papers and exams, you're going to have, depending on your field, you might have more papers, especially on the humanities, social science side, but you might have more exams if you might be in the STEM area. There's going to be more weight. There's going to be a lot more activity that may take place in grad school versus undergrad. Learning style and study habits. Know who you are. Know how you learn. If you're that person who cannot study if a pin drops, or if you're that person who loves white noise and you love sitting in a coffee shop, understand who you are. Embrace who you are. I am not a fan of studying in the morning. I just can't do it. I'm a night owl. So think about when you're effective, the environment, think about the time, think about the people, think about the tools. These are all aspects that contribute to your learning style and study habits. Time management. You are the keeper of your own time. You have to manage being a student. Perhaps some of you will be in assistantships, taking on additional roles. Perhaps some of you are full-time. Others may be parents, siblings. There are a lot of roles that graduate students take on and you cannot forget yourself in the midst of all of those roles that you may carry. So please, please manage your time because that will be very important in graduate school. You are in the driver's seat of your degree. A lot of times we're used to someone instructing us or lecturing us, but in graduate school, you have to keep up with the deadlines. You have to be responsible for your notes. You have to create your own study guide. You are in the driver's seat. So please keep that in mind. You can go as slow or as fast as you want, but you will be responsible for that journey and how long it takes. So keep that in mind. Begin with the end in mind. One of my favorite phrases, why did you choose graduate school? What motivated you? What was your reason? If you think about your reasons, you think about your motivations, what pushes you, then that will become the anchor in your journey. And when you're tired, exhausted, you don't want to read another paper, you, you don't want to take another exam, you will remember the end and you will keep it in mind so that you can keep pushing yourself forward. How to prepare for applying. So we have a series of questions here and I'm going to walk you through them. First, you think about what program to pursue. I love talking about food, so I'm going to use food as an example. If I was interested in food, then I have a couple options. I could do food science. I could do food nutrition. These are two examples out of many that shows that my interest, the word food, could really be connected to a couple of graduate programs that I'm interested in. Now, let's say I decide, okay, I'll do food science because I'm interested in creating product. So now I decide which degree to pursue. Am I pursuing a master's in food science or am I pursuing a doctoral degree in food science? That's gonna depend on the career that I want and the position that I'm hoping to gain after graduate school. Which institution? So now that I know I'm interested in a master's in food science for this example, then I have to figure out what schools exist with phenomenal food science programs. And then which faculty? So who are the professors? There are professors who study food chemistry. There are professors who look at food manufacturing. There are professors who look at packaging. There are professors who work in an interdisciplinary field, perhaps in poultry or chicken or ham. So who interests me? Who do I want to be my major professor? And that's a question you really want to consider. Think of one or two individuals, connect with them, understand what their research interests are, and then reach out to talk to them about their journey. And then is funding or financial aid available? Once again, we want to use the word funding because funding is implicating that you don't have to give funds back while financial aid in grad school is implicating loans. So now that I know who I want to study under, does that individual have funding? If that individual doesn't have funding, can they recommend someone who do? Also, thinking about funding, even if it's not given to me in my graduate program, can I work 
for different offices in housing, in resident life, in student affairs, in a diversity, equity, inclusion office to still get an assistantship while working as a graduate student in a graduate program. That's something that you also want to keep in mind. Financial considerations. You've talked, you've heard me talk a little bit about the end part on the previous slide discussing funding. So there are graduate school assistantships and departmental assistantships. So let's start with the word assistantship. In exchange for you working a certain number of hours between 13 and 20 hours a week, you will receive a $25 tuition cost. So your tuition will be waived and you will only pay $25 a semester at UGA. Please note that this does not include fees. And traditionally, assistantships will arrive at the end of the month. So please make sure that you're prepared and ready once you begin an assistantship. So you will receive a tuition reduction of 25 bucks. And at the end of each month, you will receive a certain amount, depending on your amount that you have signed, what you should receive ideally can cover those major housing costs, food, transportation, et cetera. Once again, the numbers will vary on the department. So when I say departmental assistantships, I might be able to have assistantships in food science, my department, but if I'm not able to, or if I'm interested in shopping around, I might decide I wanna look at resident life. I wanna look at student affairs. I wanna look at the Office of Institutional Diversity. There are other places that also need graduate assistance. So you can find those assistantships elsewhere as well. There are scholarships and fellowships offered through the graduate school. However, I recommend you talk to your graduate coordinator and ask them about these scholarships, ask them about these fellowships. Some of this funding that I'm referencing might require nominations. And if you wanna be competitive for those nominations, make sure you have a good conversation with your graduate coordinator. On-campus housing options, it's quite important when you think about financial considerations. I have a friend in California who pays $2,800, $2,900 a month for rent. I have friends in Athens who pay as low as $250 and, it's, and as high as $1,500 a month. That's quite a range in Athens. So when you think about where you go, you have to think about housing because the more um, funds you have in your assistantship, the more flexibility you might have in housing options. If you feel there is a restriction in your assistantship, then you might want to pick housing that correlates to your needs. Beyond UGA, just please consider a cost of living wherever you go because that assistantship might be correlated to that cost of living. Out-of-state tuition waivers, if you are an out-of-state student who receives an assistantship, no worries. You too will receive a tuition reduction waiver and you will also pay $25 a semester as well. And same if you're an international student who receives an assistantship as well. What do you need to apply to grad school? So what you need, some of you might have standardized tests. Traditionally, you see the GRE a lot, but there's also the MAT and the GMAT as well. So keep that in mind. Look on the graduate school website. Once you find that graduate program, see what requirements they have. Some places in our, in our graduate school will waive the GRE temporarily. Others no longer consider it but there are some graduate programs that do consider it. So you wanna know off the bat, do I need to take a test before I apply? And then if you can figure out what the expectations are in scoring in that. Letters of recommendation, you wanna take three of those. Typically for the most part, three letters are required. I always recommend getting an individual who can show different sides of you. Um, what would a teacher say about me? What would a colleague who I interned under um, or worked with say about me? What would someone who I shadowed with say about me? So think about having people who reflect a different story or a different experience that isn't in your statement of purpose, that isn't on your CV or resume. 
I highly recommend at least one professor should be considered for a letter of recommendation. These academics want to know how well you do in academia. So it's very important that you have at least one professor. Some students struggle with having conversations with professors or having time. So I do recommend, now that you are listening to this video, I recommend you talk to professors. You start visiting office hours when available and build relationships. Even if you have a hard time building relationship, talk to someone you really enjoy and say, hey, I really enjoyed your class last semester or this semester. I want to know if we can have a conversation because I would love to have a letter of recommendation. Sometimes it's that conversation that you have to build to let them know. However, I want to recommend that once again, you look at the graduate school's website, look at the graduate program with departmental requirements. For the most part, um, letters of recommendations may not be specified who they want to write it, but there are certain programs that are very specific in what type of recommendations they prefer. A statement of, a statement of purpose typically is one to two pages long, expressing who you are, what's your story, why UGA, why that college or school within the University of Georgia, why the graduate program, what do you want to do when you have that degree? How do you want to change the world? Who would you be in the classroom? And how do you contribute to the lab, to the field? All of those questions are surrounding the statement of purpose. So you want to be purposeful in it. So please, please have trusted critical friends review your content. The people who you're afraid to read it, these are the people you want to read it. In addition, you can easily talk to a career center coach they might have that at your institution. However, if they don't, the UGA Career Center is a phenomenal resource where you can search and they have examples of some of these documents. So you can also look at some examples at UGA Career Center. Transcripts, you can submit unofficial transcripts as you are applying. Once you are admitted, then you will have to submit official transcripts. Then there may be some supplemental documents that might be required. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Supplemental documents could be an interview, could be a writing sample, could be a visitation day. These are different pieces and parts that they would let you know after the first phase has passed. A roadmap to graduate school. This is a phenomenal graphic that tries to show students in an ideal world, if you're a freshman and you finished in, as a senior, what were some of the things you could do each year? Now, as you look through this, I don't want you to freak out. I don't want you to get nervous because I did not experience an ideal roadmap to graduate school. I went to college, I went to UGA as an undergrad. I graduated in four years, which is very rare, first of all. And then I had no idea what I wanted to do that career indecision I talked about in the beginning. So I took two gap years and really thought hard and experienced some things and worked a little bit to get an idea of what my future could be. And then I figured it out. So in that same vein, I was someone who was able to experience an unideal roadmap and still receive a master's in higher education administration. And then now I'm pursuing a doctoral degree in education, college student affairs administration. So as an example of someone who is imperfect, please know that you can look at this roadmap and decide where you want to step up, speed up, and where you want to backtrack and build some things before you get to where you're going. So I hope this roadmap is helpful as a way to track your journey and inspire you potentially to figure out what you can do each year. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Once again, traditionally, this is an hour long. There are more slides, but we want to focus on getting this information to you in 30 minutes or less. If you want to connect with us, please know that we are the Office of Recruitment and Diversity Initiatives. grecruit at uga.edu is our email. You can go to our grad school website and you can follow us on our social media if you want to see who we highlight and what we're about. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you as a grad dog 
at UGA. Go dogs, and do not hesitate to reach out. If you have more questions, we will be more than happy to answer them.